now at 11. It could be one of the worst storms parts of Oregon have seen in decades. We're going to show you where the whiteout conditions have drivers stranded tonight and the snow that's still on the way. Plus, a terrifying afternoon at a Vancouver school as two people are shot in the parking lot. What we've learned led up to that violence. And later, some good news, 17 years in the making. You know, I'm one of these people who thinks that, you know, everything happens for a reason. How a woman in Alabama helped return a local couple's wedding ring they thought was lost forever. And we are going to begin tonight with that severe weather headed to southern Oregon. We're going to start at the worst spot right now uh, and then move our way north. How about that? This is what it looks like as we speak for drivers on I-5 in California, just south of the Oregon border. We got some video from a viewer named Nancy. She left from Salem this morning thinking, hoping that she was going to be able to beat this storm. She could not. Now she is stranded on I-5 for hours along with so many other drivers. Right now, I am seeing wide out conditions. Um, there's a uh, wind gusts that just blow snow ice um my windshield is covered in ice the wipers can't keep up with it the heater can't keep up with it uh the wind is so hard that i have my both feet on my brakes because i feel like i'm gonna uh blow, blow away Man, all right, so if that isn't scary enough, think about it. These drivers are now worried about having enough gas to keep their cars running, to stay warm. This is a look at where they're stranded. I-5 South is closed at this point, just north of Weed, California. We just got an update, too, from Nancy. She says the state troopers have helped them to move just a little bit. She's hoping to get to Weed tonight to hopefully ride out the rest of this storm. Now moving just over the border into Oregon, we want to take a look at the Siskiyou Summit. Uh, video from earlier today makes it easier to see the conditions that drivers are dealing with. The wind was just whipping that snow, and of course, it's only gotten worse as the sun has set. We just got word ODOT is now stopping drivers on I-5 south of Ashland to keep them from going into California, dealing with what we just saw with Nancy. We have new video, too, into the newsroom from our crew near Ashland. They are seeing trucks uh, after truck pulled over on I-5, waiting until it's safe, safe enough for them to travel a little further south, but a big mess. And this video here shows what conditions are like on the coast, west of there. This is video from Crescent City, California. Look at that wind ripping the roof off of a building. That's an Ace Hardware. Pieces of the roof blowing into the Crescent City Police Department's parking lot. Okay, let's check oh. in with Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino taking a closer look at this storm. That video tells a lot of the story. Where do we go from here, Matt? Yeah, that's right, Dan, and none of this is surprising, and I'm glad that the California Highway Patrol is helping people out down there. Hopefully get them over to Weed or some of the other small towns like Wairika and find some sanctuary for tonight, get them off the freeway. Here's the storm itself. It is now moving inland. It moved inland right near Crescent City. In fact, I'm going to come back to those winds at Crescent City in just a moment. But first of all, the storm is moving inland. It will weaken now that it's moving inland a bit, but that doesn't mean the snow is over. This storm is going to take a little bit of a dive into California, then track back into Oregon, and it's going to keep snowing tomorrow for a couple different reasons across the Cascades, clear up here to Mount Hood. So that's the good news for the ski areas. The winds will die down as uh, the storm continues to weaken a bit. So some of the highlights for you on this Cape Blanco, Southern Oregon coast, a gust of 106, Medford 58. And while that doesn't sound that strong, that's one of the highest wind gusts on record in Medford. That's a tough place to get super strong winds because it's down in a deep valley. The orientation of the valley, that's a strong wind gust for the Medford airport. Now Mount Shasta, look at this, 16 inches of snow in 12 hours. That means it's been snowing at the rate of over an inch an hour for 12 hours. Weed, California, where Nancy and others are stuck, very close to Mount Shasta, which is kind of ground zero for this storm in terms of snow. And now back to Crescent City. About 3.30 this afternoon, they had a wind gust out of the south at 69 miles an hour, probably responsible for the video that you showed. But by 9 o'clock tonight, they were getting north winds of 60 miles an hour plus. So imagine that. South winds near 70, then north winds near 60. They just couldn't catch a break all evening. They will be finally begin to do that as we go into the nighttime hours tonight. Now, as far as Portland goes, it's just cold with east winds. That's going to continue overnight. Those east winds are building. Thanksgiving will be clear, cold, and windy. There's another chance of snow late Saturday and Sunday. We'll come to that in just a minute, but I want to show you the watches and warnings. No more uh, winter weather advisories in any part of the Willamette Valley. We're out of it, but the winter storm warning continues up in the Cascades as it does for much of the state. The blizzard warning this area continues until 1 a.m. So that's still going on, and I am watching some rain work its way up close to Canby and McMinnville, but this is very light, not expecting any precipitation in the Portland area tonight. Back to you. Dan. All right, Matt, thank you so sure. much. Uh, you saw Matt show the, the map there and what we're 
we're, we're paying attention to. We want to show you some more of the conditions over the mountain passes in Oregon. Let's give you a look now at the Sandy M Pass headed out into Bend. Our crews found some really slick whiteout conditions really on Highway 20. Chains or traction tires are required here at this point. But we did see a couple of crashes today and many drivers not prepared. If you get stopped on a hill, you can't get going without them because it's all polished snow. If you're going down the hill and need to stop and you don't have chains, you're going to slide. ODOT trucks have been busy. They're plowing the roads, trying to keep that pass open. They're also putting down gravel in this area and driving is tricky closer to home. If you're up around Mount Hood, for instance, crashes have blocked Highway 26 throughout the evening. Our crew shot some video here on the way back from Mount Hood Meadows tonight. They saw multiple crashes, many involving semi trucks. Traffic was at a standstill. They're also spotting some downed trees from some heavy wind. ODOT is now asking people to avoid 26 over the mountain if possible, though they're going to work through the night to try and get that road clear. Stay with us, of course, for the updates, the latest on this storm. Anytime you can use the KGW app or KGW.com and we'll have reports from Southern Oregon live on KGW News at sunrise. That starts at 5 a.m. We want to turn now to, frankly, just a horrible story in Vancouver. That's where two people were shot in a school parking lot this afternoon before the gunman then turned the gun on himself. It happened outside Sarah J. Anderson Elementary School. Catherine Cook is just back from Vancouver where she talked with deputies about all this. Catherine? Dan, deputies say the gunman had just gotten out of jail. On top of that, one of the victims had a restraining order against him. Caught in the middle of all this are three kids. It's a tragedy all the way around. Before Clark County Sheriff's vehicles raced over, before deputies strung up crime tape, and before bullets shattered this car window, this was just Sarah J. Anderson Elementary School in Vancouver, a place where only minutes earlier kids had gone home for the week, excited for a long Thanksgiving break. Then around 3.15, deputies say someone fired targeted shots into this car in the school parking lot. The bullets hit two adults inside, Two kids in the car weren't hurt. The school went into lockdown as medics rushed the victims to the hospital. The gunman drove off. Deputies caught up with him at the intersection of Northeast Andreessen Road and Patton Parkway. There, after a brief confrontation, deputies say the man shot himself. Clark County Sergeant Brent Waddell says one of the victims had a restraining order against the gunman who had just been released from jail. This ongoing domestic violence situation, one of our deputies has been working pretty close and then the deputies have witnessed what went on. It also affects them, uh, but it affects mostly the, the families. Waddell says the two kids in the car joined a third sibling inside the school. All three kids comforted and cared for by deputies and school staff. Three kids on their way now to Child Protective Services as investigators piece together what led up to this. It takes a toll on, you know, not only the families that are involved, but also the school, the people that found them, people that witnessed, and the deputies involved. At this time, investigators aren't releasing the names of those involved or their medical conditions. They're planning on releasing more information tomorrow. Dan. All right, Catherine, thank you so much. We want to get you guys caught up now on some of other headlines from tonight. Police are looking for the person who stole a car in Salem with a two-year-old child inside at the time. The child's mother parked her car at the Holiday Lodge Motel, left it running with the kid inside and went inside that motel. She said when she walked out, someone was driving away with her car and the child inside. Police then found that car abandoned just a few blocks away. Luckily, the child is okay tonight. We can tell you that back with mom. Police are looking, though, for the thief. No word yet on a suspect description. Also in Salem, police arrested a man they say has been breaking into newly finished homes and stealing the appliances. You get a look at the guy right here and also a look at some of the stuff he allegedly stole. Refrigerators, microwaves, dishwashers, other items. 31-year-old Byron Kieser is in jail tonight. Investigators say they found evidence of the crimes in his car. We're learning some new information tonight about a man accused of intentionally starting a huge grass fire in Northeast Portland back in August. You'll probably remember this when this fire caused more than $2 million in damage, damaged homes and businesses all along 82nd Avenue. Investigators say today video surveillance helped them track down this man, their suspect, Alan Singerhouse. Through a search warrant, officers found clothing inside his home matching what he had on in the video. Singerhouse is charged with three counts of first degree arson.